In this series, we're going to take your piece from this to this. All using skills, tips and tricks brought to you right here. There's no previous learning needed, no fancy plugins or synthesizers, and no musical understanding. The only things you'll need will be your eyes, your ears, a door, and a sample instrument. So come on, let's get started. Hi, Adam with Audio Imperia here, and welcome back to the third part of our series, The Journey to Becoming a Composer. In episode one of this series, we covered the three main pillars of MIDI composition, the door, MIDI data, and sample playback engines. In the second episode of this series, we covered two further core concepts of MIDI composition, articulations and key switching. If you haven't watched these already, we recommend checking out the previous episodes using the links in the description below so that you've got a better idea of these concepts. In this episode, we're going to be taking things to the next level and really begin crafting our music using two more features common to MIDI composition, expression and dynamics. These two features are essential components in creating realistic sounding musical performances and are easy to access inside of our powerful pyramid engine. Think of dynamics and expression as a way to mirror the way that real instruments are actually played. For example, string instruments are played with a bow and that means that the notes can be played as long as you like. You can just keep moving the bow back and forth over the string. By contrast, brass and woodwind instruments are played using the breath and obviously breath is finite where you can only go on for so long before we need to take another breath. So when trying to get the most out of dynamics and expression, it really helps to understand how each instrument is played and what techniques are available to each instrument. So let me introduce you to these features and walk you through how you might use them in your own work. In episode one, we explained that MIDI is to a computer what sheet music is to a human musician. It's a set of instructions for the computer to follow to create music. There are two types of instructions that MIDI can give, static instructions and continuous instructions. Static instructions are exactly what they sound like, a single instruction for the computer to follow. A single musical note is an example of a static instruction. It tells the computer three pieces of information. The pitch a note should be played at, the duration of that note, and the velocity of that note. We'll be covering velocity in a later episode, so let's focus on pitch and duration for now. To show you an example, here I'm asking the computer to play the note C4, and I'm asking it to play that note for a duration of four beats, which equals one bar in our time signature of 4-4. Four, four. This is a static instruction. Once the computer has executed the instruction, it will see it through all the way to the end, unless we interrupt it, for example, by stopping playback. It represents a single instruction that doesn't alter over time. Here I've created a short melody of four MIDI notes. This is really just four static MIDI instructions, one after another in sequence. You can see them in our MIDI region here, and as the computer reaches each MIDI note, it executes the instructions supplied by the MIDI data. Static instructions are a big part of MIDI composition, and for some articulations like staccato or staccatissimo, it may be all you need. But what about for longer articulations, like a legato or a sustain, where the note is held for a longer duration of time? True musicality comes from the ebb and flow of musical lines, the rise and fall in volume and intensity in a way that creates an emotional connection to the music. Static MIDI data gets us so far, but we have another important tool at our disposal, continuous MIDI data. Static instructions don't change, they're snapshots in time. But continuous MIDI data does change over time giving the computer constant information about how a line of music should evolve and develop. I can take advantage of continuous MIDI data to make use of our dynamics and expression controls. In Nucleus, we can think of the dynamics knob as a way to alter the intensity or tone of a musical instrument. Let's take the French horns as an example. Here I have the six horns patch loaded and the sustain articulation selected. You can see our dynamics knob is set at the lowest setting. Here, the French horns have a beautiful, warm, soft quality. If I raise the dynamics to the highest setting, it completely changes the quality of the French horns.
Now they sound louder, more exciting, bold and intense. It's a totally different sound, but from the same instruments. But we can go one step further. I can change the dynamics in real time. Here I'm playing and holding a note, and using the dynamics knob to move from a quiet, soft dynamic to a loud, intense dynamic, and back again in real time. Hear how the colour of the instrument changes over time? We now have a way of evolving from one tonal quality to another in real time, opening up a whole new world for your MIDI compositions. Here's those four static MIDI notes I had earlier on. Let's take what we've learned and apply it to these notes to begin shaping them. We know that we can change the dynamics knob in real time using continuous MIDI data. Let's explore in more detail how this works. Each instrument is controlled by a MIDI channel, as we covered in episode one, and each MIDI channel has a number of what are known as MIDI CCs. MIDI CC stands for MIDI Control Change, or MIDI Continuous Controller, and you'll find both these terms used interchangeably. But more important than the name is what MIDI CC does. Think of MIDI CC as a lane of continuous MIDI data that can change over time. Each MIDI channel has 127 MIDI CC controllers, and each one of these can be used to control a different function of an instrument. We use MIDI CC Lane 1 to control the Dynamics knob. You can change which CC lane controls the dynamics knob inside of our pyramid engine if you wish, but I highly recommend sticking to the default settings until you understand these concepts well, as some CC lanes are being used for other instrument functions, and changing them around may alter the performance of the instrument. So, here I have my French horn melody again, but you'll see at the bottom of the screen I've added a MIDI lane. This MIDI lane controls MIDI CC1, which is what our dynamics knob is connected to. I can use this tool, called the Pen Tool in Cubase, to manually draw in data to the MIDI CC1 lane. At low levels, the Dynamics knob will be near the bottom of its range, resulting in a quieter, softer tone. As I ramp up, the Dynamics knob will also be dialed up, smoothly and naturally increasing the intensity and power of the instrument over time. We now have French horns that sound as if they're really being played. So that's how we use MIDI Continuous Controller data to add realism to our instruments. We've successfully used the dynamics knob to add intensity and colour to our French horns. Now let's move on to the next control, expression. In addition to the dynamics control, Nucleus also has another feature that we can use to shape our music, expression. If we think of the dynamics knob as a way to control the intensity of the instrument, then the expression knob can be thought of as a way to control the volume. A way of turning the volume of the instrument up and down in real time according to your needs. This may not sound as useful as dynamics control, but don't be fooled expression can still be a powerful tool when it comes to shaping your music, especially when combined with a dynamics controller to create maximum realism. Let's have a look at it in action. Here's that French horn melody again. This time I'm going to add some expression data to further enhance the realism of the performance. Expression data is added in much the same way as dynamics data, via a MIDI CC. Where dynamics makes use of CC1, expression makes use of CC11 instead. Again, this can be changed inside our pyramid engine if desired, but let's stick to the default setting for now. I can use CC11 to set my expression knob to a starting volume for my melody. It's often a good idea not to have this at 100%, otherwise it leaves you no room to enhance dramatic swells or shape the melodic line. As you can see in my dynamic CC lane, the melody really swells at this point. Now, the dynamics knob alone is doing a great job at creating that swell, but I can push it even further using the expression knob. Here I'm adding a swell in the expression CC data to coincide with the dynamic swell. As you can hear, this really helps the melody push through at this point. It's giving me more flexibility to create realistic movement in the melody. Here I've written a short melody on our beautiful sounding solo French horn. I've used the dynamics controller and the expression controller to really shape the flow of the melody. Together they combine beautifully, breathing life into the performance and capturing more emotion and lyricism.
You'll also notice the dynamics and expression controls are not following each other exactly. They're doing slightly different things. It's these subtle contrasts that breathe extra life into the performance, so don't be afraid to experiment. See what sounds good to you. This is all about capturing your performance and expressing yourself. So there you have it. In this episode, we looked at the two major controls we use to shape our music, dynamics and expression. These two features can really take your music to the next level, enhancing the realism and the emotional content of your music, so be sure to experiment with them. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at three more features you can use to really enhance the realism of your music. Velocity, vibrato and legato. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.